When opposing genocide is seen as radical, radicalism becomes a moral imperative. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. The dumbest thing we're asked to believe about Biden is that a politician who's been an enthusiastic Zionist and virulent warmonger throughout his entire way too long political career privately has deep moral qualms about the genocide he's been unconditionally supporting in Gaza. Every time I listen to the song Hins Hall, I get more disdainful of all the worthless, vapid celebrity artists who are refusing to step up and do something real for once in their pathetic lives. Israel supporters are such psychopathic war sluts that they are currently shrieking their lungs out at Biden for making a purely symbolic face-saving statement that he won't give Israel the weapons to annihilate Rafah despite the fact that he has already given Israel all the weapons it would need to annihilate Rafa. The Washington Post reported the other day that the Israeli military has enough weapons supplied by the U.S. and other partners to conduct the Rafa operation if it chooses to cast aside U.S. objections, citing an anonymous senior official from the Biden administration. This has since been confirmed by the Israeli military, who says it has enough weapons to proceed with its planned Rafa invasion and that those plans will move forward. A new poll from Data for Progress and Zedio has found that a majority of Democrats believe Israel is committing genocide in Gaza and that the police crackdown against anti-genocide protesters is wrong, which kind of makes you wonder why they're still identifying as Democrats. If Biden's supporters believe Biden is guilty of genocide... What does that say about Biden supporters? The New York Times has been given a Pulitzer for its scandalously discredited, notoriously biased, and widely mocked Gaza coverage. The Pulitzer Prize Awards ceremony is literally just a bunch of propagandists giving each other trophies for being good at propaganda. Receiving one should be taken as an insult by anyone with a conscience. House Democrats rescued Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson on Wednesday from Republican Marjorie Taylor Greene's initiative to oust him over his support for the massive World War III spending bill. This was the first time in U.S. history that a minority from either party has ever intervened to stop the majority party from removing their own speaker. Because Democrats just love war that much. And Republicans are even crazier, with GOP lawmakers promoting a bill to send college protesters to Gaza in the House, and another separate bill in the Senate to have them put on a no-fly list as terrorists. This new protest movement is driving empire managers out of their goddamn minds, which means it's working and it must continue. When opposing genocide is seen as radical, radicalism becomes a moral imperative. And to top it all off, we're still not out of the nuclear brinkmanship woods with Ukraine, and in fact it's getting more dangerous. Because of reckless comments from London approving the use of British weapons to attack Russian territory, Moscow has formally warned that if this happens it could directly attack British military installations in Ukraine. Russia has also announced that it will be holding drills to simulate the use of tactical nukes in response to repeated assertions from French President Emmanuel Macron that sending NATO troops into Ukraine to fight Russia directly is an option that's still on the table. Belarus, where nuclear weapons were recently deployed by Moscow, has announced that it will also be conducting drills to test its readiness for nuclear warfare. Obviously, direct hot warfare between NATO and Russia is an absolute nightmare scenario that must be avoided at all cost for the sake of every organism on this planet and we are already way too close to it. We've got to turn things around and stop this maniacal empire before it gets us all killed.